welcome to Chatty Walks with Angela. We are on Knightsbridge and we are going to walk to Hyde Park today. Just going to point you towards Harvey Nichols as the traffic comes towards us. So that there is the junction of um, Brompton Road and Knightsbridge. Just behind us is Harrods. I don't know what that building is. And here's the traffic. There's always traffic. I probably need to press a button actually. There we go. That guy just ran across. I am not doing that. Right, can we cross? Yes, we can. So that person has let us across. And we are at Marivana. I don't know what that is. Looks cute though. Oh, and the Wellington Court. All right. There's Bulgari. So if you watched my Harrods video, my Knightsbridge Harrods video, we walk past there. And we walk down there, Knightsbridge Green, towards Harrods. Today, we are walking through here into Hyde Park. So now we've got the traffic out the way. <laughs> Again, welcome to Chatty Walks with Angela. I'm Angela. And we are just doing another walk around London. Bit of information, bit of history, not always reliable. I do my best. And some food and drink checks along the way. Here is Osteria Romana, which looks very nice. Very nice looking spot. Antipasti, am I seeing? No prices. 16 pounds starters, 16 pounds. Pasta, 12 pounds, 17 pounds. So not too bad. Could manage those prices in London. We are outside Park Lodge. And we are back to enter Hyde Park. This was Park Close, SW1. Here we are with the map. Yay, here's a map. We are here at the bottom and we are going to walk along the eastern side of Hyde Park today. If you look at the map, you see there's a western side that has Kensington Palace, Kensington Gardens. Uh, we've got the Princess Diana Memorial Fountain. We're not doing that part today. We're going to go along the eastern side, the end of the Serpentine, up to Reformer's Tree and Speaker's Corner and Marble Arch. So that's where we're headed today. Thank you, Matt, for showing us that. And we've got some nice houses here overlooking Hyde Park. And because we're at Hyde Park, there's a doggy barking. I think the doggy's lost its owners. <laughs> it's looking a bit confused. I don't know what this road is called. Ah, over there. <laughs> right, so let me just turn to show you the houses overlooking Hyde Park here and buildings. Even though we tend to think of Hyde Park in terms of Henry VIII, deer hunting and things like that on in Hyde Park after he took it off the the monks at Westminster Abbey. Actually this was a prime spot for socialising amongst the Elizabethans, the Tudors, kings with names like James and Charles became a hot spot for high society. Charles II, to leap ahead in history, we're going to head back in history. Charles II actually made horseback riding very popular, including amongst the women of the elite. And a coach road originally ran along here, but was sent elsewhere. They built another road to the north and horse riders claimed this spot for themselves, thus creating Rotten Row. 
People argue a bit, where did the name come from, Rotten Row? Some people think it comes from Route de Roi, the King's Way, or possibly Rotteron, a military gathering, because military horses were inspected here by um, Queen Elizabeth I and people like that. It was in use, Rotten Row, the name, from the late 18th century and became known as that in the 19th century and known as that today. And it would have been crammed with fashionable horse riders. Only the monarchs allowed to drive a carriage along there that you could ride your horse. And it became one of the daily events of the summer season to be seen along Rotten Row. So that's what we were just seeing, Rotten Row. And we are now heading towards the Serpentine. As I said, this is the eastern side of Hyde Park. We could do the western side and we will do that on another walk. But today we're walking straight up from uh, Knightsbridge to Marble Arch, giving you a taste of feel, if you like, for Hyde Park. It's still the Easter the end of the Easter holidays now in the UK, so there's a fair bit of school kids and things out and about. It depends where you live. Some kids are already back. Now I look at this and think, if I just tell you about Rotten Rome, that was Rotten Rome. Anyway, <laughs> decide for yourselves. I know, I'm not sure. Anyway, Rotten Row, around here somewhere. That one, or the one I just described. <laughs> really knowledgeable, well done. Maybe this is Rotten Row. It looks a bit bigger, doesn't it? Maybe the whole area. Maybe this is Rotten Row and I told you about something else completely. Right, let's head to the Serpentine. It's a beautiful day. We've had actually some really nice weather over Easter this year. I think, what's the date today? I've got a dedicated helper with me. Introduce yourself. Hello. Do you know what the date is today? It is the 21st of 21st, today. 21st, thanks. Hello, sweetheart. Right, here we are at the Serpentine. I'm not gonna continue along it, because that would uh, be quite a long walk. Just giving you a glimpse. So we've got sort of boats that you can hire out, those sort of pedalo things, and there's a, I don't know if you can quite catch it in the distance, there's a public swimming area and a little swimming uh, changing rooms and a cafe to sit at, it's actually very nice along there, can recommend. And I can see, you can tell it's a nice summer's day because they're putting out the deck chairs. Deck chairs in Hyde Park. Spring has truly sprung, Summer must be here. 21st of April. I don't know what it's like around the world, but in the UK we're getting uh, daylight well into the evening now. In the southern part anyway, up north probably a bit more. But it's sort of staying light till about 8 in, in the evening and things now. Lovely. So we're at the time of year when we see all these types of things coming out. Instagram feeds full of them. This is a refilm of a video I filmed about two months ago. And it was a disaster. It was cloudy, it was windy. I just couldn't hear me talking, it was so windy. Some people might consider that an advantage. 
but it doesn't sound brilliant and it was dark and it was just very miserable. Today is such a much better day for this. So to the memory of Queen Caroline, wife of George II, for whom the long water and serpentine were created. And that was news to me. I didn't know that the long water and serpentine were created for Queen Caroline between 1727 and 1731. I like it when I learn new things. Let's have a little view. Then we're going to look over the other side where we've got the water cascading downwards. As I said, boats, kayaks in the distance for hire. We're looking west and um, also the Diana Memorial Fountain you would find along the um, left hand side of the Serpentine. And then, as I said, onward to Kensington Gardens and Kensington Palace. I'm going to cut over here. I have stuff to show you. Here we are. See, and we got some pidgeys having a little bathe in the water. Love that. I think it's really nice. So tropical as well. Come visit, I recommend. As I said, eastern side. And then just down here, see if we can walk through actually, we have the Serpentine Bar and Kitchen for your noshing, eating, stuff like that. Now, last time I was here, you wouldn't dream of sitting outside, it was freezing. But today it's beautiful. So why not enjoy the view? It does tell you not to swim, which is, you know, wise words. So there is a dedicated swimming area. I see a bird on a little nest in the water through there. So it's all opened up now. I remember just a nice spot. If you have a look, oh look. Bless them, they're building their nest. I'm not sure it's a good spot. I don't know enough about them. Bless. That's adorable. Very strong smell of coffee here. Got some swans over there. This really does feel like spring has sprung, doesn't it? Lovely. <laughs> Lots of people taking pictures of the uh, animals. Now, prices. Breakfast served until 11.30. 11.95 and a thousand calories for a full English. <laughs> I love that. £11.95 full English, including Cumberland pork and herb sausages. Avocado and poached eggs. Eight pounds and 446 calories, that's on toast. Is there a pudding? No, can't see a pudding. Okay, oh, toast, jam and butter. Four pounds 50 and 338 calories. So there you go. And apparently their coffee is award winning. Lovely. Let's go this way. We're gonna cut through the park. I see somebody who looks a bit like that Jules guy. Right, got some cyclists here. Let's just pause, let them through. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same bloody thing every button. Okay, I don't know what they were doing. <laughs> There's a gun salute at 12 noon today. I don't think we'll be here at 12 noon. We have to be on a bus by then. I'm probably going to film a bus journey after this back to Waterloo. Um, Mr. 
chatty walks with London needs a pickup from the station <laughs> so got to hurry it today so Hyde Park reinstatement with some information on that I'm now going to give you some Hyde Park information give me a sec while I open my notes enjoy the view uh, dedicated help is taking the camera while I get my notes out sure thing he's going to do panoramas Do you want me to take a photo? Oh. <laughs> it's more easier. <laughs> you want the guns to leak. <laughs> you know, you know where it is? Marble Arch. Oh, okay, so you've got Park Lane. Yeah. Um, Okay, so just be the helpful tour guide. <laughs> I will take this. Okay, I actually don't know where we're going. I've directed them. It's like, which way shall we go? Um, let's go this way. Let's follow them. History. They were French. I say Histoire. Histoire of uh, Hyde Park. Which actually has got a little French connection in it somewhere. So, as I've said earlier, we sort of associate Hyde Park with King Henry VIII taking Hyde Park from the monks Westminster Abbey in 1536 after the dissolution of the monasteries. One of the key cornerstones of um, London history, actually. And he and his court were often to be seen on thundering steeds in the hunt for deer. But as I said, it's not all it's associated with. It's also associated with canoodling, flirting, general socialising and things like that. So I've taken quite a lot of history from the work of Miriam Bibby. Miriam Bibby's done some jolly good work on Hyde Park. And she says actually Hyde Park could be traceable to early medieval times with the formation of the manor of Ia. It's a bit windy and one of the problems of my last walk was wind destroyed it. So I'm pointing that way so we don't get too blasted. I will show you the other way as well. Now of course the Hyde Park in case you're unaware it's going to point you that way. It's pretty close to the Palace of Whitehall centre of government, centre activities, going back a long way. And it was inevitable this was going to become quite popular. So that is Park Lane, by the way, in case you're unsure. We're on the eastern edge and that is Park Lane over there. she used Hyde Park to review her mounted troops and continued on with the hunting as well. And coaches, not the coaches as we think of them obviously, um, coaches and horses. Um, they became a big deal during her reign. Ooh, I'm going to show you this. I looked this up, this statue sculpture but I can't actually find a reference to it somebody pop one into comments it's a little bit of a baby and a, and a mother and here are the toilets so as I said Elizabeth first horses and coaches became big where she reigned and James's King James after that continued and you had your first public vehicles for hire Hackney carriages, yeah, hackney carriages. We see it on black taxis, black cabs now. So they started here. And as a result, Hyde Park became the place for the elite to display themselves in their vehicles. 
Casey to help us laughing now because he knows what happened last time when it got really windy flowing in high behind. We had to yeah, dump, dump all the footage. <laughs> so, let's turn around for a while. So James I probably started the horse racing tradition in Hyde Park and coach racing as well. And by the time Charles II turned up, it was a great atmosphere in here. Great spot for socialising and a new novelty, riding in the ring. The reformer's tree, a circular mosaic depicting the blackened tree of the reformer's tree, I'll tell you the story, and was made by sculptor Harry Gray. The, the large oak tree that originally stood here was a focal point for protests in 1866 by the Reform League, a group which campaigned for all men to have the right to vote. And guess what? The suffragettes turned up here as well. And they were campaigning around this area, protesting around this area too. And this was so, sort of a precursor to Speaker's Corner. So as I said, Charles II introduced the novelty riding in the ring. And this was an enclosed circular space around which coaches drove in two directions. First one way and then the other, creating the opportunity for their occupants to nod, smile and flirt with each other as they passed, like a Stuart speed dating event. you can hear me we are approaching speaker's corner and from there marble arch i think you may be aware i've mentioned it before that marble arch had the notorious tyburn gallows where all sorts were hung hanged killed off they believed to have done foul deeds of some description and they had, if they were condemned to die at Tyburn, they could make a final speech. And this started a history of speaking around here, public speaking. And kind of people listening, loads of people came to watch people um, at the end of their days. It was a big public event. And that kind of started a tradition of speaking here. I don't know what that is. Does anyone want to put it into comments? Do so as I try to avoid horse poo under my feet. Still telling us there's a gun salute at 12 noon. So if you look ahead, you can see the, um, you can see the traffic and that's going around Marble Arch. Marble Arch used to be the big entrance to the park. But it had to be separated because of road traffic management. Lots of cyclists, lots of pedestrians, as you can see. And if we look in that direction, that's actually the bottom of Edgware Road. Well, or the top, depending on your point of view. So this is where Edgware Road kind of meets Oxford Street at Marble Arch. It's actually quite hot now. <laughs> I think the temperature today is supposed to be 18 or 19 degrees. I actually like the view across the park, especially because you can more or less see through to Buckingham Palace down there. The end of Park Lane 
as it meets Oxford Street. And as I said, we are going to see if we can find a bus um, and do a bus ride from somewhere along Oxford Street to Waterloo, Waterloo Station, Waterloo train station. Okay, so you can, can you still walk through? No, they've even closed off the main direct route through at the moment. So that's something I haven't seen before. Is it completely closed off through the centre of there? I see some military looking types in the middle as well. Very interesting. So here we are at the coffee shop at Speaker's Corner. See if I can get some prices, shall I? Let's have a look. Scoop ice cream waffles, five seventy. Nutella, four fifty. Plain is three thirty. Ooh, Purbeck ice cream. I can really recommend Purbeck ice cream. Twister lolly, two pounds forty. So there you go. Some prices at the coffee shop at Speaker's Corner. We are now at Speaker's Corner. Eighteen sixty-six is the date that people trace the history of Speaker's Corner to, when a meeting of the Reform League demanded the extension of the franchise of the Reform League was suppressed by the government. Marches and protests had long convened or terminated their roots in Hyde Park, often at Speaker's Corner itself. So when the Reform League protesters arrived at Speaker's Corner on that day and found the park locked, demonstrators tore up hundreds of yards of railings to gain access and three days of rioting followed. The next year, when a crowd of 150,000 defied another government ban and marched to Hyde Park, police and troops did not intervene. Spencer Walpole, the Home Secretary, resigned the next day. And in 1872, the Parks Regulation Act set out the right to meet and speak freely in Hyde Park through a series of regulations governing the conduct of meetings. So there you go, a little bit of history of Speaker's Corner. As I said, Park Lane over there. Always noisy, always noisy. And we are coming up to the junction of Oxford Street. At the Marble Arch, which is where we're heading next. I think it's fair to say Marble Arch is one of the most sort of recognisable sites, one of the most uh, visited sites, the French lady who was asking me what directions, she was going to Marble Arch with her daughter. So one of London's biggest sites, standing at the corner of Hyde Park and Oxford Street. It was actually originally a village known as Tyburn, due to the uh, arrival of the Tyburn Brook, one of the most notorious execution sites in the country, yep, Marble Arch. Executions were held at Marble Arch for nearly 600 years. More than 50,000 deaths. And there is a stone memorial, it's quite hard to find, where the gallows once stood. One of the most famous executions was that of Oliver Cromwell, who was actually already dead. Cromwell, the military leader, famous for his role in the English Civil War, had already been buried, but they exhumed his body and symbolically hung him at Marble Arch. So Marble Arch wasn't originally located here. It was actually designed to be a grand celebration of British victories in the Napoleonic Wars and act as a gateway to the expanding Buckingham Palace. So it was actually designed to be part of Buckingham Palace. And the arch that we now see isn't as grand as the architect 
John Nash had originally planned. King George IV died. William IV decided the costs were way too high. And so the arch that we're going to come up to in a sec, that was completed in 1833, misses parts of its design, including a statue of the deceased king. And if you go to the Victorian Albert Museum, you can see a model of the original concept. After Queen Victoria, she took the throne, moved into Buckingham Palace, expanded Buckingham Palace. See my other videos about that. Marble Arch was dismantled and rebuilt on the corner of Hyde Park, where as you can see just through there, it still stands today. But it is separated from Hyde Park because the roads had to be widened. There was too much traffic. London grew and so they've had to separate it through the road system. The closest tube station by the way is Marble Arch and it's a good tube station for what I call the bottom end of Oxford Street, the far end of Oxford Street. Here we are, you can see Marble Arch tube just through there, going to cross over. This is the top well, actually, there's a slightly different road here. Green man, woohoo! We are now at the top of Park Lane. I don't know if any of you have stayed in the hotel that's ahead of us there. Got a red man now. Oh, yep, yeah. ah, uh, yeah, okay, we can cross it. So here is Marble Arch Station, one of the entrances and exits. There's another one over, over there at Oxford Street. And here is the Marble Arch itself. If you look here, um, there was an installation at Christmas in the new year, and they've just recently taken that down. So uh, made a lot of progress in the last two months. Table tennis. I find that slightly puzzling. I don't know if I would come here, but I guess I'd be good at table tennis. If it's an interest of yours, why not? So here is Marble Arch. Are we going Corinthian for those pillars? If I remember from my classics correctly. No protests here today. Very often there are protests when I'm here. Just a pilsing sight behind me. Here we are right at the far end now of Oxford Street. And we're looking at the, in a minute, the Hard Rock Cafe. Uh, sorry, the Hard Rock Hotel, just over there. That's Great Cumberland Place. And there we are, Oxford Street. We have arrived. Just give you a view this way through Marble Arch and the building site and the traffic and everything else that central London brings you. Marriott, that's a Marriott Hotel, knew it, knew there was something like that. And again, you can see Marble Arch Tube just through there and Marble Arch Station just through there as well. Lots of uh, ways in and out. Now the Tyburn, uh, the sort of spot for the gallows is just over there. Here it is, here is the site of the Tyburn tree and those gallows. Just show you where we are. That's Marble Arch there and Oxford Street there. Um, and I think I will finish this walk there. We are off to find a bus to take us along Oxford Street all the way to Waterloo Station. I believe it's the number 139 bus, but uh, you'll know because you'll see another video and it will have us on it. I do hope you enjoyed this walk. 
I will see you next time. Bye-bye.